as the muscles of the heart walls contract to pump blood around the body, they need a constant supply of oxygen. That is delivered by blood flowing through a network of arteries that course through the walls. These are the coronary arteries. The coronary circulation describes the blood vessels of the heart muscle or myocardium. The structure of the coronary circulation is illustrated in these figures. The coronary arteries originate from the aorta as it enters the heart and they transport blood from the aorta and along the outside of the heart before branching into the muscle layers. The arteries running deep within the myocardium are referred to as subendocardial. From the arteries, blood flows through capillaries, then venules, but as the venules are within the heart tissues, they drain directly into the chambers of the heart. The capillary network in cardiac muscle is particularly dense, reflecting the high oxygen demand of the muscle cells. The consequence is that all the muscle cells are within a distance of about one red blood cell from the nearest capillary. This maximises the delivery of oxygen to the muscle and the removal of metabolic waste. A particular feature of the coronary circulation is that when cardiac muscle contracts during systole, the arteries running through the ventricles become squashed, making it difficult for blood to flow through them. The vessels can become squashed to such an extent that they are completely obliterated. This figure shows how blood flow varies during the cardiac cycle starting in the middle of diastole when the muscle is relaxed. Blood flow in the left and right coronary arteries is plotted in the two panels at the bottom with concurrent pressure changes in the aorta shown at the top. The most dramatic effects on the coronary circulation are seen in the left ventricle because it contains more muscle and contracts more powerfully than the right to eject blood into the systemic circulation. This can be seen in the middle trace. At the onset of systole, as the ventricular muscle contracts and occludes the arteries, the blood flow drops to zero. As systole progresses, there is an increase in coronary artery flow as the rising aortic pressure forces blood through. But as systole ends and the ventricle relaxes, there is a dramatic rise in blood flow as the vessels open to reinstate the flow of blood in the coronary circulation. The consequence is that most of the blood flow to cardiac muscle takes place during diastole. A major regulator of coronary blood flow is the sympathetic nervous system. When stimulated, such as when you exercise, the sympathetic nervous system has the overall effect of increasing coronary blood flow to support the increased work done by the heart. However, it has differential effects on coronary arteries of different size. The mechanistic basis of this is the nature of the adrenergic receptors present in the smooth muscle cells. When stimulated by noradrenaline or adrenaline, alpha-1 adrenoceptors promote smooth muscle contraction and artery constriction. In contrast, stimulation of beta-2 receptors on the muscle cells promotes relaxation and vasodilation. The overall effect of these agents on an artery and hence the effect of sympathetic nerve stimulation, depends on the relative numbers of alpha and beta receptors present. In the large coronary arteries, alpha-1 receptors predominate, so the effect is constriction. This constriction helps to propel blood into the smaller vessels, which are the main determinants of tissue blood flow. The small coronary arteries mostly express beta-2 receptors, so they dilate in response to sympathetic nerve stimulation, thereby increasing blood flow in the tissue 
and increasing the delivery of oxygen to the heart's muscle. As cardiac muscle is a highly metabolic tissue, not surprisingly, metabolic factors are important regulators of coronary blood flow. As oxygen consumption increases due to increased cardiac work, blood flow increases in order to match blood flow to oxygen demand. A major metabolite is adenosine, which acts on adenosine receptors in the smooth muscle of the arteries to evoke muscle relaxation. The receptors involved are the adenosine A2A and A2B subtypes. When activated, these receptors open ATP-sensitive potassium channels in the muscle cell membrane. This causes membrane hyperpolarization, which in turn closes the voltage-gated calcium channels, thereby limiting calcium entry into the muscle cells and causing relaxation. Other metabolites, such as lactate, can also influence vascular muscle and help to link blood flow to metabolism. In addition to these mechanisms, healthy coronary arteries are also capable of autoregulation, a mechanism by which the artery constricts in response to an increase in blood pressure. Autoregulation keeps coronary blood flow at levels appropriate to the needs of the heart muscle across a wide range of blood pressures.